Hello, and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Today, we're going to be giving away our secrets on setting up a vise on your mill. Now, before we set our vise on the table, we need to clear away the chips. First, with our brush, then we'll clean those T-slots with our handy T-slot tool, and we'll finish up with a quick wash down. Our next step is to stone our table and our vise. Right, thanks. What kind of stone are we gonna use? Well, for that, we've got a few choices. In my toolbox, I usually carry a four inch round combination stone. This one is silicon carbide. It's a little aggressive for just placing a vise on the table. So if you do have a silicon carbide stone, be sure to use the fine side and not the rough. Now a good all around stone that a lot of shops use and we use here at the factory is an oil filled aluminum oxide stone. It's a combination stone that has a rough side and a fine side. And again, we're just checking for burrs, so we'll use the fine side. Now before we can stone the table, we have to clean it with a solvent or alcohol. If we don't get the gunk off the table, then that gunk is gonna load up our stone. Now with a gunk free table, we're gonna break out our stone. And using the fine side, we're gonna check for dents, kinda of knock down any burrs that might be there. If you feel it catch on something, that might be a, a high spot that we have to look at or a chip that we've gotta break loose. Now when we're done stoning, I like to take my bare hand, just wipe away any swarf that might be there. And we're gonna do the same thing on our vise. Now because we've got raw iron exposed, we don't want it to rust. So I'm gonna use some RP, some rust preventative, and just put a thin coat on my table and on my vise. Now when I place the vise, I'm gonna slide it forward and back a few times. This way, any swarf that I've missed is gonna get trapped in these T-slots. Now we've put our two bolts onto the vise and we've lightly snugged both of them. Now we're gonna tell you the secret to squaring up a vise. We don't need both bolts. We're gonna take out the right one. With two bolts on the vise, when we tap the vise with our, with our mallet, it's gonna teeter-totter back and forth, making it hard to indicate in. Now, with only a single bolt on the vise, we have a perfect pivot point from which to rotate about when indicating in the vise. Now I've jogged my indicator right in front of the left side of my jaw, the side closest to our pivot point. Once here, I'm gonna jog my y-axis up against that jaw until my indicator reads zero. Now when I place the vise on the table, I actually made it a little bit crooked. So I know already that my indicator is gonna stop touching the vise at some point. Now at this point, I'm gonna grab my hammer and tap on the vise. Right. <laughs> This is a dead blow hammer. It's got lead shot in it to keep it from bouncing and a soft face so it won't damage my vise. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this. As I tap, the vise is rotating around our pivot point. It's now made contact with the indicator. I'm gonna keep tapping until my indicator reads zero. And I'm gonna go a little further, maybe five or 10 thou. At this point, I'm gonna jog my X axis back where I started and re-zero the Y axis until my indicator reads zero. Now we'll jog back across the vise. It looks like my vise is still off by a couple thou, so I'll tap it in again. We'll go back where I started, re-zero my indicator, and then check it. My indicator now reads zero across the entire face of that back jaw. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and snug down this other bolt. and we'll give it one more check before tightening them completely. Now we set this vise with only two sweeps. Now even if it takes you five times going back and forth, it's a method that's gonna work 100% of the time. Okay, our vise is set, but we missed one critical step. We didn't check for clearance. We didn't make sure that our vise wasn't gonna hit the machine around it. Now there's not much to hit on this VF3 with a six inch vise. 
So we're going to walk back up front and take a look at installing a 6-inch vise on our tool room mill that doesn't have quite the amount of clearance. Well, we're back up in front in our demo room where I've mounted a 6-inch vise on our TM1P. Now, there's three things we have to check clearance-wise before we can buy off on this setup. Now, if you want to skip this step, that's okay, but then you might want to go to haasparts.com where you can order new way covers for your machine. You know, it's, this is a really big deal. It's something that we have to check every time we put a vise on the table. On this small machine with a fairly large vise, the first thing we have to check is for door clearance. As you can see, this door can hit the vise handle really easily. Even if I push this back now to a point where the T-slots align with the table, I need to jog it all the way back and jog the Z down to make sure it's going to clear. We've jogged our Z, now I'm going to jog my Y axis all the way back. I'm getting closer than I'd like to. If I just grab some half inch bolts and put this vise down, it's going to crash into my way covers. So I'm going to pull this forward where I've left myself maybe a quarter inch of clearance in the back. Now we'll jog it forward again and make sure that we still clear the doors. Okay, so this length of a vise can fit in this machine without hitting the way covers or my doors. But we still have to check one more thing. The vise is open right now. Let's close this and see how we do. Now everything looks great still. It looks like we should be fine. Let's jog our Y axis back and see how we do. The nut is sticking out the back of the vise by about an inch and a half. We only had a quarter inch of clearance before. The back of the vise, when the vise is closed, is now going to go straight through our Z-axis way cover if we jog this axis all the way back. So it looks like there's no safe position to mount this particular style of vise on this size machine. If you need a vise for your TM1P, you know, check out the different brands, look at the specs, make sure you find one that fits. For a Kurt, that's likely going to be a, a D688 vise. But even with that vise, you still have to make sure it's mounted in a way where it won't hit the doors or your weight covers. Measure twice, cut once. Or in our case, measure twice or go on haasparts.com and order those weight covers. That's it. And thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Thank you.